Matheson was also instrumental in providing LaSalle with its first permanent public library facility. He helped purchase the property at 3rd and Marquette Streets, where the present library, funded with a $25,000 Carnegie gift, was erected in 1907. By 1880, the need for a local bank to serve the many needs of a growing community was obvious. The first bank, LaSalle National, was opened in the year 1880 on 1st Street, very near its present location. It was 1885 when Eureka Savings Association was chartered to help local residents obtain financing for new homes. The next financial institution, LaSalle State Bank, opened in 1894 on the site of 1st and Marquette Streets. With more than 300 years of operations between them all, all three banks are still strong in serving the community today. One of the area's first commercial radio stations, WLPO, aired its first broadcast from LaSalle in November 1947. The station was first located in the majestic Hotel Kaskaskia. Eventually, the broadcast center was moved to its present site across from Illinois Valley Community College. The first newspaper to be published in LaSalle appeared in 1851, a year before the city was chartered. Called the Standard, the weekly lasted only a year. Over the course of the next 100 years, more than 30 newspapers opened and closed in the LaSalle, Peru communities. Some of the names of these small publications were Beacon Light, The Rattlesnake, The Watchman, LaSalle County Press, and The Post Tribune. After several evolutions involving many different owners, the only one left publishing today is the Daily News Tribune. Following a disastrous fire in December of 1948, the LaSalle-based newspaper opened their modern printing plant on 2nd Street and has been the recipient of many industry awards over the years. Despite the national trend for family-owned newspapers to be sold to large chains, the local paper has been owned and operated by Peter Miller II and his family for more than 50 years. Today, the News Tribune circulation provides news and information to dozens of communities in both LaSalle and Bureau counties. An important chapter in the medical history of LaSalle occurred in 1887 when three Franciscan sisters of Sacred Heart moved to the area to establish the city's first hospital. The sisters also organized a training school for nurses, which began in 1919. St. Mary's Hospital grew with the town of LaSalle as several different buildings were closed and rebuilt over the years. Decades later, in 1977, LaSalle citizens understood the financial wisdom of merging their health center with People's Hospital in Peru. And so, LaSalle St. Mary's was closed and the Illinois Valley Community Hospital was established. Now at the end of the 20th century, IVCH has evolved into one of the finest healthcare facilities of North Central Illinois. Cement also became important to LaSalle during the last part of the 18th century when the new industry grew dramatically. The first cement company located within the LaSalle city limits was the German-American Portland Cement Works on the east side of town. In the early 1900s, the company employed a huge workforce of 350 with a $400,000 annual payroll. In the 1920s, it was purchased by the Alpha Cement Company, which continued to make improvements at the facility. Today, that same plant has evolved into Illinois Cement Company, which took over the works in 1974. It remains one of the most important industries and employers in this area. The turn of the century from the 1800s to the 1900s in LaSalle continue to bring many positive changes in the community. Transportation by horse and buggy slowly gave way to electric trolleys and the first versions of the automobile. Dirt roads throughout the city were replaced by modern brick streets. The LaSalle Fire Department was motorized in 1917 and its horses were sold off. For many years, the city had two fire stations, one at City Hall, the other on Crozet near 8th Street. A modern facility was dedicated on 5th Street in 1987 following a public referendum. At the height of its popularity in the 1920s, the Interurban, also known as the Illinois Traction System Service, moved passengers and freight in electric train cars from Joliet through LaSalle to Princeton. The population of the city grew steadily during this time, 
In 1860, the number of residents, a little more than 4,000. Eighty years later, in 1940, the population more than tripled to 12,800. Following the turn of the century, La Salle became a popular vaudeville stop as Zimmerman Opera House featured such acts as the Marx Brothers and other traveling theatrical plays and shows. Later, in 1914, the La Salle Theater showed silent movies with live music featuring both local and national talent. Because La Salle was a center of a large industrial area, it attracted smart, determined newcomers who opened businesses and shops to serve the community. Such a man was an Irish coal miner by the name of Thomas Cawley. With partner Vince Kelly, they opened a small pool hall and cigar store that eventually became famous throughout the Midwest and beyond as a popular casino. To many, La Salle became known as Little Reno as thousands traveled to the city each weekend by rail or automobile for music, drinking, and gambling. Businesses such as Taylor's Livery and La Salle Garage Company were prosperous at the turn of the century before society slowly changed their personal mode of transportation from horse and buggy to automobiles. The area's first laundry was opened in La Salle around 1887 by Oliver Holmes and later bought out by W. E. Fitch in 1895. Serving some 30 communities surrounding La Salle, Fitch's Laundry furnished clean shirts and collars and grew to employ nearly 30 people by 1911. The present city hall was built during the administration of Mayor Walter Panic. Costing an astonishing $75,000, the building was dedicated on January 1st, 1907. Designed by architect Victor Mattison, the LaSalle City Hall is of the Renaissance style, composed of paving brick and Bedford stone. Renovated many times since it was first constructed so long ago, the building was named to the National Register of Historic Places in the late 1980s. On the educational front in LaSalle, many gifts of money and property from the Matheson family continued to improve schools in the city. New buildings and athletic fields did much to attract quality educators to teach at LP High School and other LaSalle facilities. One of the Midwest's first junior colleges, the LaSalle Peru Oglesby Junior College was established in 1924. Classes were held nightly in the high school. The success of that institution continues today as Illinois Valley Community College. IBCC is now recognized as one of the finest junior colleges in the United States. A major event for LaSalle Public Schools occurred on September 6, 1938, when the LP High School football stadium was open. A part of the Federal Works Progress Administration program, the massive sports complex was celebrated as one of the nation's finest high school football facilities. Refurbished in the late 1990s, the stunning stadium was rededicated with much public fanfare on August 25, 1996. Parochial schools also flourished in LaSalle for decades, beginning toward the end of the 1800s. In 1888, the Irish Congregation of St. Patrick's Parish built an elementary school near their church. The present school, located on 4th Street between Marquette and Gooding Streets, was dedicated in the late 1950s. St. Hyacinth's moved their regular classes to a new building on the corner of 11th and Hennepin Streets in 1901. Sixty years later, in 1964, the St. Roque Church opened its school near 6th and Crozet Street to accommodate children of their parish. In 1985, the parishes of St. Hyacinth, St. Roque, and Queen of the Holy Rosary consolidated their schools. Known as LaSalle Catholic, over 160 students are enrolled annually. Started in 1957 as a developmental center for cerebral palsy victims, the Lighted Way continues providing educational services today in LaSalle for mentally and or physically challenged youngsters. Other LaSalle schools include LP Christian School and Midwest Cathedral, both of which offer Christian education classes for the children of the area. In short, today LaSalle schools continue to offer excellent educational opportunities for children of all ages. A major milestone in LaSalle's history was the completion of Interstate 80 on its northern boundary in 1962. 
Another victory for the city of LaSalle was a period in the mid-80s when local residents successfully lobbied both state and national legislative bodies to complete I-39. The North-South Freeway, which runs on the largest bridge in Illinois at LaSalle, the Abraham Lincoln Memorial Bridge has been an economical boost to every community that it passes through. J.C. Whitney & Company is one of the first new big buildings to be erected in the newly annexed east section of LaSalle. That was in 1995. The nationally known auto parts order business currently has more than 400 people working in the huge distribution center adjacent to Interstate 80. LaSalle continues to attract new businesses. Flying J, a travel plaza located off Route 351 and I-80 is now open. The 24-hour fueling station features a full-service restaurant, convenience store, and traveler rest area. Current Mayor Art Wyszkowiak is more than enthusiastic about LaSalle's future. Continuing the vision of previous administrations, we are working hard with our aldermen and business leaders to attract new industry and businesses to LaSalle. The expansion of our city limits and utilities to the east has given LaSalle a unique opportunity to offer valuable city services and prime real estate adjacent to two major interstates. We have an experienced workforce, abundant raw materials, and access to many modes of transportation. Now at the beginning of a new century, LaSalle stands ready to take a new high-profile leadership role here in the Illinois Valley. Today, as the city steps into a new millennium, residents of LaSalle continue to study the successes of their past as they work towards the future. They enjoy their lives here. They teach their children here. They play, work, and retire here. The quality of life in LaSalle is good, and there are people in the city who will work hard to ensure that that fact never changes. Now as the citizens of LaSalle prepare a year-long celebration of their city sesquicentennial in 2002, plans are being made to unite the past and the present to achieve the extraordinary. A wise man once wrote, one of God's greatest gifts is to enable ordinary people to do the extraordinary. The extraordinary. Now that's something the people of LaSalle have always been good at. <laughs>